Hi guys, what is going on and welcome to today's YouTube video. In today's video, I'm going to give you guys two potential trading ideas that are currently being developed on the Bitcoin price and also on the Ethereum price. Both charts are looking primed for potential more upside in the upcoming days and week before a potential midterm crash slash midterm correction. In today's video, I'm going to explain you guys my current view on Bitcoin and Ethereum with potential trading ideas. Before we dive into this video, make sure to also check out the amazing discounts we have currently going on on Black Friday, crazy discounts on VIP membership, on the courses, on the mentorship program, and a lot more. Definitely worth to check it out through the link in the description that will guide you to our website or check out the Discord community for more information. But now that we have all of that out of the way, let's dive into it because we can see that Bitcoin still is trading in that range that I've been talking about for weeks right now already. I think it's about two weeks now that we are trading inside of this range. And we can see that this week we got another bounce from the range low area. And something that I think is quite interesting about the bounce from this range low area is that with this bounce, we did sweep a whole lot of liquidity beneath this low and a whole lot of liquidity beneath this low. But now we did front run this low. And why do I think this is interesting? Because I think that the people that were opening breakout long positions over here, targeting this high, this high and potential higher levels, did not put their stop loss all the way beneath this low or this low. Why didn't they put their stop loss beneath these lows? Because let's say they open up a long position on the breakout over here and they put their stop loss beneath this low and the target is a little bit above these highs, for example. This is not worth the RR. You're talking about an RR anywhere between one and one and a half. But now if we put our stop loss beneath this low, for example, or beneath this low, then we are looking at an RR of approximately two all the way towards an RR of three. So I think the breakout long positions had their stop losses beneath these two lows and not beneath these two lows. So we swept the stop losses off the late long positions and the breakout long and buy positions. But more importantly, the people that were opening shorts over here or opening shorts on this breakdown over here, where do we think that those people were looking to take profit on their shorts? They were looking to take profit, obviously, at this very obvious low over here and this obvious low over here. And now by front running these two lows, the short positions did not have the opportunity to get out at profit or to move their stop loss to break even or into profit. So their stop losses are still resting above these equal highs over here. Okay. And I think that's currently the most important draw on liquidity. Now, after we have swept all of this liquidity, the price went up again and we have a confirmed shift in structure over here. Why is this a confirmed shift in structure? Well, if we zoom in, we open and close a candle over here above the high that brought us to a new low, right? So high, low, new high, new low. Now we broke through that high, so we shifted structure on the one hourly time frame to the upside again as well. Now, currently we should say, if we are trading this range until it breaks, right? If we are going to simply trade it until it breaks and we switch on the range over here, we can see that we are currently above the mid-level and close to the untapped liquidity pool above the range high. So based on trading this range until it breaks, we simply have to expect a move towards the range high liquidity pool over the upcoming days and week. Now, currently I think on this bounce over here, there is quite some people FOMOing into buy positions once again, targeting this range high liquidity. Now, anticipating that those people are opening late long positions, where do we think that those people put their stop loss? I think they put their stop loss beneath this low and some will put their stop loss beneath this low over here. Once again, why don't we think they put their stop loss all the way over here or over here? Because if they open up long positions on this bounce and they put their stop beneath these two lows, it's not worth the RR if they're targeting higher levels. Now, if they use this low or this low as their stop loss, then it is worth the RR. And that is the way that you should analyze where the stop losses are currently at. Now we can see that if we go from swing low to swing high and we switch on the premium and discount, we can see that our discount is aligning almost perfectly with the stop losses beneath this low. 
and that this low is aligning with the quarterly level over here. So mid range and discount align with these stop losses, quarterly level, and also the discount obviously align with these stop losses beneath this low. Okay, so what do I expect for Bitcoin? I expect, or at least I hope, that we are going to sweep either this sell side liquidity and bounce from there, or sweep this sell side liquidity and bounce from there. Afterwards, we target the range high liquidity. Now, my eventual target is a little higher. If we are going back to this previous price section all the way over here, and that is a quite a long time ago, right? And currently we are going to go on the one hourly time frame. And I'm once again going to go back all the way towards this area. We can see that over here is where we have a breaker block. But more importantly, I think this one hour bearish for value gap is an interesting level to target. It's around $39,000. All right. Now, if we go back once again to this price section that we have over here at the current local price section that would be my main target okay so i'm still anticipating a deviation potentially above this range high area but the deviation can go easily as high as thirty nine thousand dollars to fill up some of that imbalance over there before getting the midterm correction slash crash until we see signs of weakness, I'm not shorting. Let that be very, very clear. I'm not trying to predict the market. I'm trying to anticipate it. But at the end of the day, we have to react to the, what the market is giving us. And that is something a lot of people don't understand. And currently, the market is giving us bullish structure on all time frames, draws on liquidity to the upside. So I'm not looking for shorts until I see a clear mitigation of a huge liquidity pool. And we do have a huge liquidity pool over here with signs of weakness. But until then, we are going to try and long until proven otherwise. Now, obviously, for exact entry, stop loss, and take profit targets, you have to join the VIP channel. But these are the trading ideas that I'm looking to play on Bitcoin. Now, let's continue with Ethereum because Ethereum is looking very, very interesting as well. The Ethereum range, guys, is honestly beautiful. So we have the range high and we have the range low. And if I'm going to extend this to the right, we can see that we have ourselves a beautiful range that is getting respected beautifully. Okay, so the mid range is getting respected very, very nice. Quarterly level getting respected very nice as well. Range low, two pivots, range high, one pivot. Now, same for Ethereum. Swept a lot of liquidity over here and also over here, but it front ran the lows where people wanted to take profit on their shorts. And I think that is something quite bullish. Now, potentially Ethereum should target the range high area over here and can even potentially break out. Because I do think that Ethereum and altcoins can run a lot higher compared to Bitcoin over the upcoming weeks. Okay, so if Bitcoin is going to deviate, Ethereum might squeeze a lot higher. Now also Ethereum, after the sweep of the liquidity, simply broke structure over here to the upside. And I think as long as Ethereum holds above the range high area, uh, above the mid range, I should say, and this breaker block over here, Ethereum is bullish to me. Now, we are currently forming a nice little inducement over here above the mid range, and that is something that I do really like. Also, if we switch on the EMAs on the one hourly time frame, we can see that we, uh, that we flipped the 200 EMA and the 200 moving average on the one hourly time frame. Two very important moving averages. They also align with the mid range and with this breaker block over here. If I'm going to go from swing low to swing high, what we can see, and we switch on our premium and discount, is that our discount is aligning with this breaker block around this mid range. Personally, I think if we get a retest of this area, you should start looking for long positions on Ethereum. You can wait for low time from confirmation, something like this. This could be a trigger, entry over here, top loss over here, DCA order over here, target over here, and potentially higher levels. This could be a nice RR trade, because like I said, Ethereum might squeeze higher. Looking for longs until proven otherwise, looking for longs until I see a clear mitigation of a huge bearish liquidity pool with signs of weakness. And I do think that if we get a retest on Ethereum of this area, 
and get a retest on Bitcoin of the areas that I just indicated as well, we can target these levels and potentially even higher. Both charts are looking very clean to me. Both charts are looking primed to take out the range high levels. And I think you should go with the trend until proven otherwise. Now, this video is sponsored by Prime XPT. And if you guys do have any questions after watching today's YouTube video, make sure to let me know in the comments down below. Also, make sure to like and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys on Monday's video. Ciao, ciao.